Today I'm going to talk a little bit about building the Lynx Motion AL5D robotic arm. A couple things that you want to take into account as you build it. Uh, number one is the servo screws are very important. So when you take out the, all the servo screws, uh, be sure that you don't lose them. Uh, the second most important thing is when you build this, take a look at how the servos all line up. Notice that the AL5D, all of the servo horns are on the same side of the robot on all three of these joints. If for some reason this is backwards and this joint is over here, up will be down, down will be up, and it, it won't be good. So you want to make sure that as you do this, you build it correctly and you make sure that all the servo horns are in the right direction. Um, the new manual is great. Uh, there are, I'm going to show you lots of pictures from the manual. As we go through, it talks about different things and, and how to, to, to put it together. One thing now is you have a choice of bases. The base that you see here, this black piece of plastic, is optional. Uh, you can purchase that through uh, Robot Shop, but you can also mount it directly on the piece of plastic that comes with it. I strongly suggest this one because it allows you to mount it to, this happens to be a piece of black acrylic that I cut on a laser, but you can also mount it on things like a, a VEX base plate. All the holes line up. Uh, it, it works with a heavy duty base also. This is just the regular base. So as you build this, a couple things to keep in mind are making sure that you have the friction plates installed correctly. And the friction plates are these right here. And these friction plates allow the robot to hold its position with a little bit of friction, but not too much. You have to adjust them properly. It talks about it in the manual and they have to be installed properly. Uh, there's a really good way to do it, attaching it, uh, attaching them while it's attached, while it's sitting on a table. Uh, it shows you in the manual as well. Uh, another very important part to this robot is the springs in the back. Don't ever forget to put those in. Those springs hold tension on the robot as it's moving in complicated places. As it moves way out here, it helps the servos hold its position uh, for longer periods of time. It takes the, the, the weight off the servos. When you get to the wrist rotate, which is this joint right here, if you have the wrist rotate, it will allow your, your wrist to go this way. This is a medium duty wrist, wrist rotate uh, that comes with it. And then the gripper, if you notice, the gripper can be done one of two ways. I like to put the gripper on this way with the gripper on the top so that you can pick up stuff in a position like this very, very close to the table. If the servo was mounted on the other side, it would hit the table, but you could always pick it up like this as well. I think it's a little bit more versatile to be able to do it like this. Another thing that you want to make sure you do is that as you route your wires, make sure you route your wires through all of the brackets so that it's a really nice clean install and that the wires don't get pinched as it comes up and around because those wires will break and if they break the servos won't work anymore. So that's basically it. All you really have to do is follow the directions. The directions are excellent. It's about 60 pages long. It tells you how to wire it. The wiring video is coming next and make sure all the servo horns are in the right place and make sure all your servos are centered and you're good to go.